For the first time ever, RTE cameras have been given exclusive access into the Irish Coast Guard search and rescue helicopter service, revealing life and death situations as they unfold. The seas around Ireland can be some of the most dangerous in the world. The helicopter crews are a last line of defence in saving human lives. Oh, look at these two coming now, look. Oh, my God. For the crew of Waterford Bay's Search and Rescue 117, each mission can mean the difference between life and death. What we're going to do now is carry you outside and I'm winching you up and I'll be with you when we're winching up. This is the story of six months in the life of Rescue 117. On this show, drama in the Irish Sea. We saw a plane crash. We're going to go to the position. We're going to find the rowboat. We're going to find the wreckage. A rescue attempt in mountainous seas. I'm just uh, a little bit wary about taking the stretcher off that port quarter. A uh, wave actually swept the entire quarter to, uh, just a minute ago. And the search for a person lost at sea. Our initial search would be down along the beach, along the coast, all around the cot. It's a calm day at the Irish Coast Guard Search and Rescue Helicopter Base in Waterford. The helicopter crew are on call 24 hours a day, and it's time for the changing of the guard. The day shift turns up for duty at 1 p.m. After a brief handover from the previous day's crew, a new unit of pilots and paramedics begin their duty. Chief Pilot Dara Fitzpatrick is boss of the base. As is usual, Dara is making sure that her crew are keeping their skills sharp by undertaking a training mission just off the Tremor Bay area. Meanwhile, not far from the Waterford base, a very different type of mission is taking place. Oliver Dudley and his novice crew are attempting to break the world record of rowing around Great Britain and Ireland. And they have rowed their four-man rowing boat, the British Orchid, within sight of Tusker Rock. We're just coming into Tremor Bay, and we were all listening out on this Channel 16, the Marine Emergency Channel, and we just heard a mayday call from all it was. We just heard a vessel, British Orchid. The rowers can't believe their eyes. This is sort of plane crash. <laughs> The team quickly decide to raise the alarm and row towards the area where they think the plane hit. Black Coast Guard, this is British Orchid. Come in, over. Oh, there's a guy on scene. Yeah. Yeah, is that something I took it on today? Coast Guard, this is British Orchid. Estimate a mile or two away from us. Over. Right by Tuscar Rock. Tuscar Rock. The British Orchid is a rowing boat. Is a rowing oh, boat. Oh, crap. Over. Okay. Not too sure what, what the what, rowing what, boat. What's a rowing boat doing around yeah, Tuscar Rock? Yeah, we weren't really too sure about that. On duty today is Captain Dara Fitzpatrick, co-pilot Ronan Flanagan, winchman Keith Devaney and winch operator Neville Murphy. They have no idea what they are facing. In 1968, Aer Lingus Flight 712 from Cork to London inexplicably crashed into the sea near Tusker Rock. 61 passengers and crew were killed. With a plane uh, crashing, you think, uh, how many people? How big is the plane? Uh, you think tragedy straight away, you think disaster. The helicopter is about 10 minutes away, and with the prospect of multiple casualties in the water, Dara and her team are in full rescue mode. Uh, landing gear is up, the brakes are off. Brief, we're going to go to the position, we're going to find the rowboat, we're going to find the wreckage. You're uh, British Orchid, you can see a uh, survivor, and you're about 500 meters off. Uh, helicopter rescue 117 should be with you in a few moments, over. Bloody hell, we're there in eight minutes. The news they've been waiting for. It's a single engine plane, and incredibly, the pilot has survived. The rowing team are first on scene. Just a quick update uh, one person aboard the aircraft, and he is visual now with a small surface craft. He's standing on top of the fuselage at the moment. The crew of the British Orchid rowing boat don't know it, but when the helicopter draws near, the downdraft from the helicopter rotors will create hurricane force winds strong enough to potentially damage the small fiberglass rowboat and injure its occupants. Okay. The helicopter's two minutes. Thank you very much. Okay. 
If they get too close, there could be five casualties rather than just one in the water. I know, I saw you! I saw you! I'm amazed you're still alive! Ah. Winchman Neville Murphy instructs the robo to retain a safe distance from the rescue. You have visual, we're on site. Uh, can you ask uh, the orchid to stand off and uh, we commence switching over? Uh, just about 10 degrees to go, coming into wind now. Roger, down to 40 feet. Yeah, on the way. We'll just keep an eye on the wrong boat to the right. Uh, entry will be forward, in over the target, put the key down, yeah. and uh, recover them on a double yeah. stop lift. Now it's time for the winch crew to get the casualty on board. Positioning the helicopter 40 feet above the crashed plane, winchman Keith Devaney gets ready to jump out of the helicopter. Winch operator Neville Murphy guides Keith to the plane. Roger, last side, forward and right four. Forward only now, foul three, reduce speed. Forward and right one. Steady, 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 forward one. Contact with casualty on fuselage, steady, good position, hold position. Getting the strap on, getting away from the fuselage. Back of one only. There's an EPUB, steady, 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 good position. Steady, good position, left one. Left one. Left one. Left two. Left two. Don't want to lift them. Steady. Good position. Picking up the weight and lifting in. Winching in fully now. And you can move left away from the target if you wish. Or do you want to fly away? Uh, no, I'll start drifting but nice and slowly Winching forward. in. Just under the door now. Bringing Keith and the casualty up along the door. Keith and the casualty out the door. And bringing them in the door. Casually, and keyed in the door now this time. And keyed in the door now. In only a few minutes, the Coast Guard have completed a successful mission. The paramedic crew check the survivor for signs of injury. Just for your information, we have uh, one casualty on board who recovered from the, uh, the fuselage of the wreckage. Uh, looks fairly good and well. Our intention would be to uh, take him back to Waterford Airport. How hard did you hit the water? Uh, pretty hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I controlled it quite well. You're right. a lucky man. Absolutely. Uh, well done, nice landing. Yeah, nice landing is right, yeah. <laughs> it does get a bit scary when you're out there waiting for something to happen. But uh, thank God, brilliant. They were very, very lucky that rowing boat was going by. He actually called it in. Brilliant. Uh, this, is Oscar, this is helicopter rescue 117. Well done to you. Uh, very good uh, operation there. And I uh, just want to thank you for your uh, cooperation and well done to you, over. That's not a problem. Always here to help. Thanks very much. Well done to you guys. Out. <laughs> <laughs> we just saved somebody's life. Oh, oh happy, oh. happy days. <laughs> Save someone's life. Might get his crazy plane back. <laughs> that job, <laughs> that job. You thought he was talking about a bird that dived into I the sea. Did. Did. How did you ever doubt me how a bird came out of the sky? It was massive. Back at base in under half an hour with casualty alive and well. A successful mission for the Waterford crew of Rescue 117. It's still a nice feeling though when you actually get somebody live. That sounds awful, I don't mean that to sound bad, but That's so cool. many times you don't. And I do, and I know in my head, I'm probably, probably a little bit pessimistic when it comes to things. And then so when you come and you go, one person is alive, you go, oh my God, that's great. Survivor John O'Shocknessy made a full recovery. Each year, the Irish Coast Guard coordinates thousands of rescues on land and at sea, no matter who the casualties are or where they're from. The Irish Coast Guard has four helicopter bases around Ireland, who work with 55 volunteer ground units and the services of the RNLI. The base in Waterford was built in 2002 and provides emergency cover 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The chief pilot in charge of the base is Captain Dara Fitzpatrick. Dara is one of only a handful of civilian female rescue pilots in the world. All pilots and crew at Waterford ultimately report to her. I am flying since, since about 1990 and started the search and rescue in, about in March 93. It's like anything, it's probably like a fire station or anything, the same thing. You're sitting around, we're sitting around here for 24 hours. So you get to know people really, really well. Um, you know, they're about their families, their hobbies, what they like to eat, what they don't like to eat, this type of thing. 
this is our operations room here. The call from the Coast Guard would come in over on our scramble phone over there. The only information we'll get from the Coast Guard is there's somebody sinking in a boat in a latitude and longitude. So we'll come straight to our map. We'll plot the latitude and longitude so we roughly know where it is. We're on 15 minutes readiness at the moment, so decisions have to be made quite quickly. Um, I'm the chief pilot here, so my main job really is just to make sure the base runs safely. You never know we're going to get a call out. You might get, you know, five in one shift and then you don't get one for you know, a couple of months. So you really don't know, so you just have to be ready all the time. This is our aircraft, this is SAR, Sigorsky 61. I've been flying it for about, well, this type for about 17 years now, and it's just perfect for search and rescue. It's strong, it's sturdy, it can withstand an awful lot of bad weather. Huge amount of room in the back, which also, if you end up in a multiple casualty situation, again, it's just perfect. On a rescue, the helicopter changes its name to Rescue 117. With its boat-shaped hull, the Sikorsky 61S is a twin-engine helicopter used in search and rescue by the Irish Coast Guard. It has the ability to land on water and is just 21 metres long and nearly 5.5 metres tall. Its maximum speed is 262 kilometres per hour with a range of about 400 nautical miles, giving the crew roughly 45 minutes to complete a rescue. A new Waterford crew are tasked to conduct a search of the East Cork coastline. It takes 15, 20 minutes to get down there. Uh, got One the 10 out. knots, and not trust it. On duty is pilot Peter Mackenzie Brown, co pilot Lee Bennett, winchman Christy Maddy, and winch operator Neville Murphy. A person has been reported missing for several days. It's a nice day. Members of the public have been out walking the shoreline and somebody has reported what could be a body in the sea. We just got a report from guards over in Ballycotton that there's, uh, they've found a car by the beach and they've concerns over a missing person. So our initial uh, search will be down along the beach and along the coast all around Ballycotton and uh, we'll go further out to sea then just to try and cover the whole area. Even though the crew are looking for a body, they are conscious of the urgency of the situation. There is a natural cycle for deaths at sea. At first, a body will sink. Then, after a few days, it can float to the surface again. Eventually, though, it will sink again, and the opportunity for recovery becomes greatly diminished. The crew are very aware about how the recovery of a body can bring closure to a grieving family and so are anxious to follow any lead. Often bodies that have been in the water for a few days partly submerged will take on the appearance of plastic bags. The crew are keen to take a closer look. The ground unit wades into the sea. It's not a body. What is it? Plastic, plastic bag. bag. Plastic bag. Okay. Then on your own. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Running low on fuel, the crew return to the base, disappointed in the knowledge that somebody's loved one could still be out there. Still to come, a high seas mission for Rescue 117. I'm a bit wary about taking the stretcher off that port quarter. A wave actually swept the entire quarter there just a minute ago. Rescue 117 is the Irish Coast Guard's rescue helicopter based at Waterford Airport. For six months, RTE cameras have followed this unit as they battle against the elements to save lives, often in perilous weather conditions. The high-pressure job means that the crew must always be mentally and physically strong while on call. Fatigue and tiredness could lead to disastrous consequences for the team, so it's vital that the crew of Rescue 117 know how to switch off. I'm Neville Murphy, um, I'm a winchman, winch operator with the uh, Coast Guard helicopter base in Waterford. This is our base, uh, the home of Rescue 117. Here we have our, our building, which is a, a purpose-built building to provide all the facilities for both the helicopter and the crew. Along the hallway here, we have, um, we have accommodation for the crew. In particular, uh, the accommodation is for, uh, especially for the kind of nighttime uh, work. The Ritz is uh, the first one. We have the plaza here. So uh, they are fairly basic. What we have is 
a bed in each, everybody has their own sleeping bag, so again, it's just a quiet room. Up along the stairs, this is obviously where, where most people uh, enter the building. Uh, we just have a few old cuttings out of, of uh, different jobs that we've done over the years. We are now entering, I think, one of the, probably the most important uh, places in the base. It's our, our kitchen and restroom area. Uh, we have full facilities here with the lads, as Mark is uh, making the lads a cup of tea. Very important for the captain to make the, uh, the rest of the crew a cup of tea. It's the last time of asking, coffee or tea? A coffee. Coffee, please. <laughs> There is an actual list here of, of everybody's name and what they take and uh, nobody's allowed to actually make a cup of tea on their own. It's a Waterford based thing that if you're going to make a cup of tea you make it for the rest of the lads and you, you ask the lads for a cup of tea and if you don't there will be serious repercussions. <sighs> Lovely. But often respite is short-lived. <laughs> on duty is Captain Peter Mackenzie Brown co-pilot Ronan Flanagan, winchman Mike Sandover and winch operator Christy Maddy. A merchant vessel miles out at sea has called for help. A crew member needs to be airlifted to hospital with a suspected broken leg. But the weather conditions are poor. Sea swells are up to six metres, nearly the size of a two-storey house, and are making the rescue mission more hazardous. The cargo ship weighs over 2,000 tonnes, but the ocean waves are so strong that they are making the 88-metre-long vessel bob along like a cork top. Winch operator Christy Maddy gives Captain Peter Mackenzie Brown a brief. What would you at the moment? We're up at uh, 65 feet. OK, we should be clear of all obstacles at this point. I'm just uh, a little bit wary about taking the stretcher off that port quarter. A uh, wave actually swept the entire quarter to, uh, just a minute ago. So, do you want to move forward and bring you forward towards the ladder, maybe? If uh, another wave like that came in with the, with the stretcher there, the whole stretcher would be swept right across. I'll get Ronan to keep an eye on the big stuff. So if we've got something yeah. like this coming through, Ronan will mention it on the intercom. Behind. The large ones rolling through now in about yeah, 10 seconds. three big ones oh, yeah. coming through. We'll hold my off until they go through the big swell. They're ready. We'll go in. I'll give you the hook. Just listen to me patter. I'll be talking about the swell. Big when one. we're in the lull, connect up, take you off. Are we all happy, folks? Sounds good to me, Chris. Are you all, are you all, are you all from Rescue 107? Uh, we'll be uh, dropping a high line onto your stern in the next one minute. A high line is a weighted rope which is used to help a winchman onto a heaving deck in rough sea conditions. My target, Christy. Roger, your target feeding out the high line. Roger. Couple going through. We've got to run through there now at the moment. Yeah, got a few down the right. Hey, just got ready in the back. Yep, I'm just holding off here, Christy. Roger. Yeah, the feather on the way. OK, and Mike's moving over to the door. Uh, you've got a relatively calm period there now. Oh, well, all happy, happy Mike. The, the boat is, is, is going up and down with the swell, so you can imagine that the deck that we were loading our winchman onto is uh, heaving about six metres, um, which, if the winchman's going down when the deck's coming up, would be interesting. Winchman Mike Sandover now has to complete the High Line manoeuvre in this hostile environment. On receiving the High Line from the helicopter, one crewman will tend to it, taking up the slack. When the winchman is on the wire, the line is to be kept slightly taut, and on the winchman's signal, he is to be pulled on board. The winchman then takes control of the wire, once on the deck. Now we just have to try and find the best way to actually get him upstairs. Can you hear me okay, lad? Yeah, I'm awake, yeah. We'll be lifting him up in the next minute. Okay, no, no, right, no worries. All okay. The casualty was in quite a lot of pain. I splinted the ankle and unfortunately it was too confined to actually get the stretcher down to the area where he was, so we had to give him a hand to hop back out whilst we were supporting the leg. Oh, oh look at these two coming now, look. Oh my god. Oh, 
fine after this one. Okay. Okay, okay. I think this is him, lads. Okay, Christy. Okay, we have a thumbs off, taking in the slack. Taking a clear of the deck, a clear of back and left, and call one at your target. Roger. Clear then. Even though we're on a safe height, let Mike settle underneath the aircraft. Hi, right, Mike. Take your time, Mike, now follow. Go to time. Okay, settle at the door. And you're a voice control. Hi, voice. And winch out. 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 Stop winching. Stop winching. In a large swell, you can have a lot of movement in the vessel that you're being winched down onto. Uh, the movement, sometimes it's not just up and down, you can have sideways movement and corkscrewing movement as well. So as a winchman, sometimes you can feel very vulnerable going down into that environment. It's a bit like a, a three-dimensional game of pinball with you as the ball. He was from Rescue 107. Uh, thank you very much for your assistance on that. Uh, we're now rooting towards Waterford Hospital. Uh, expect to be at Waterford Hospital at 1722, 1722 this time. As night falls, the crew return to Waterford, landing on a local playing field where the other emergency services are ready to take over. The casualty is taken to hospital. We're a really, really busy base here in Waterford. You come on shift at one o'clock and you never know what you're going to face. You could end up being called out to the mountains, you could be called to somebody who's fallen off a cliff, or you could end up at two o'clock in the morning being called to somebody, you know, there's an uh, injured fisherman or something on a boat. There's just huge, huge variety in this space here and you really just don't know what you're facing. I think most of us actually enjoy that. That's a bit of the job we actually like because you just don't know what actually, what's going to happen for the next 24 hours. Coming up next time, a nighttime mission to try and save a woman in peril. High winds threaten a rescue. Uh, let's just get out of here. Right. And the search for a missing person in Waterford City. The problem is if you're cold, you try and get undercover under trees.